Yes, you guys, welcome back. Today I thought I'd do things a little bit different and I wanna get back into having on guests on the channel. You know, I really like having guests on, you know, we can share ideas, we can talk about the news, all that good stuff. And today I had the perfect guest for you. Of course, Dan McCarthy, you guys know Dan McCarthy and Simon Phillips. They've been running some, you know, amazing news stories behind the scenes and giving us a great scoop on socials too. So I only felt right that today when we discuss what the latest news is surrounding our, our transfer window, the state of our current window now, now that we know that Hakimi is looking like he won't be signing for us, what's going to be happening now? So Dan, man, great to have you on. If you introduce yourself to the people. Yeah, appreciate it, buddy. Good to come on. Uh, yeah, just Dan McCarthy. Find me on Twitter at Maca Sport, And then obviously with, with Simon over at Simon Dan Talk CFC. Yeah, just out there doing some Chelsea bits. It's a pleasure to be on, my friend. I appreciate that, man. And yeah, I think we can just get straight into things, basically. And yeah, I mean, it's all but confirmed now that Akimi won't be signing for us. Um, I was the, I was of the belief that this was never going to be like a guaranteed set in stone thing. Um, of course, the news coming out that we didn't even make an official bid in the end. Uh, you know, what, what's your take behind the story and how are you feeling behind the scenes about this Akimi news? Yeah, so the story itself is... I was always pretty, for lack of a better word, pessimistic about the deal. I never really saw it. There was one moment, you know, where Chelsea were offering exactly what Inter wanted at the time with Alonso. Um, but apart from that, PSG were always the front runners for it. You know, Hakimi's got family in Paris. Yeah. He wants to move to Paris. They're offering, they've got more money to spend. Well, maybe not more, but they're more willing to spend it than maybe we are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was always, I was never that excited about Hakimi. And then just from what I was hearing, I was always being told that, PSG are always going to be around. They're always going to be knocking on the door. So, yeah, I was always pretty, you know, I was never too excited about it. As a fan, you know, I don't think we should be spending 70 million on a right wing back anyway. So, uh, yeah. he's a great player, right? And, you know, if we get him, if we didn't get him, then do we even need to get a right wing back? I'm sure we'll talk about that in a minute. But, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I mean, he's a great player. I would love to have seen him there. But for, for the 70 million, and do we really need him? Probably not. I think we need other areas, more importantly. Yeah, I agree with that. And it kind of felt like this is more of like an opportunistic thing. Um, you know, Alonso plus 55 million, that's like an offer where it's like, okay, you know what, if they take it, we're good to go. If not, then it is what it is. So, uh, you know, Paris and Germain, their interest has been a lot stronger. Of course, they've been making bid after bids, uh, you know, increasing their offers as well. And, you know, Akimi, a French speaking guy, with his family too it always felt like paris makes more sense to be honest so uh yeah i feel like um i'm with you spending that type of money on the wing back when i saw victor moses lift the premier league title playing right wing back all season after getting barely any like game time you know training for that position uh, how do you feel about the wing back position and role in general uh, yeah i think um Obviously, I know there's a lot of debate right about Reese James and then Callum Hudson Odoi, and you know, and now people are going to be start kicking off now right about Adama Traore uh, with the links to him. Um, you know, I think we're suitable. I think we're fine. I think we can do a job there with with the players we already have right now. Like you say, Victor Moses, we moved him there. Obviously, that's just unbelievable coaching by Antonio Conte, right? But yeah. Tuchel's definitely got that in his locker. He's tactically fantastic. So, I think we're fine. Um, what you know, what I would say is. You know, I think the reason we are going for a right wing back is because perhaps Tuchel doesn't see Callum hunter Doy as a long term answer there. I think it was an experiment. I think yeah. he's maybe tried him there, but does he see him there long term next year? Perhaps not. I think maybe he might push him back up the field. So that's maybe the reason, uh, a big reason why we are looking at a right wing back. Also, as for the quote as aging, is Liverpool Mento ready yet? Not sure. So, uh, but what I, I would not like to see Chelsea go and spend 30, 40, 50 million on a second choice. Like, I don't want to see that. Yeah. You know, there's no need to settle. Yeah. I think at that point, you just go for your number one forward, right? And your number one holding mid. They're the two big ones I would like to see. And I don't think we need to be focusing too much energy, financials into a right wing back. But I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine without one. But again, I can sit here and say that's what Thomas Tuchel wants and needs, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, you know, it always felt like maybe wing back looking for positions in that area. It wasn't the main focus. We know the main focus is signing a defender, a midfielder, and a striker. So now, if we just move on to discuss the rest of these positions, you know, uh, where are we exactly in the window in regards to, uh, you know, starting the moves, starting the discussions to, uh, you know, get these positions signed? Yeah, so Chelsea have spent a lot of time in the last few weeks looking more at outgoings and anything they're working hard to get you know outgoings happening because they know they need money 
um, they need money, but they also need the squad to decrease, right? They need to get rid of the dead wood, as yeah. we all say. So they focus a lot of energy on that in the recent weeks. Um, in terms of incoming, um, the forwards always happen. There's always talks and negotiations happening behind the scenes on the forward, right? Chelsea are active right now, talking to Haaland, talking to other alternatives, that's yeah. for sure. And quiet is probably a good thing. Um, you know, there's been a couple of a couple of people who are close to it have told me not the best news um about some of our searches but i'll kind of leave that until i get something more definitive that's why i haven't dropped anything yet because it's uh, you know it's not looking that great or it's getting tougher so i mean that's an update but yeah. it's not enough to write an article on or share so i've heard that but in terms of are we are we moving yeah we're moving like we are we are in discussions about it um the center forward's always happening for sure and then they're looking at an alternative for a defender i know rafa Varane has popped up um, it's obviously yeah. similar to Hakimi, it's more like a flirtation process than anything. You know, it's not a definitive yeah. pursuit of that. They're just, you know, we'll look at it. And Chelsea are always, you know, oh, we'll look at it. Yeah, do we need that maybe, potentially? So, uh, and I know the DM is going to come up probably later in the uh, in the window, maybe up. Near the end. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Um, of course, the candidates rise to many. Any other surprise ones you're hearing about? Uh, so there's always Bubakar, is it uh, Kamara? Kamara from yeah, Marseille. Kamara has always yeah. been someone that's kind of, oh, you know, keep an eye on that because he's got the ability to play both positions, right? Center back and, and, and holding mid. Um, Tuchel likes him. We know that for sure. We're looking in that area. France is a very heavily scouted area for Chelsea. Um, so he's always someone we've been told to keep an eye on. Um, but again, there's been no moves on that. That's, I think that would be a pretty easy deal to do, you know, in the respect of if Chelsea wanted him, Chelsea would drop the money and be able to afford him pretty easily, right? So I don't think there's too much. Yeah. Heavy negotiations into that one. Obviously, a harder deal would be Tujimeni, or more even tougher would be Declan Rice, right? So, um, the club likes Declan, the club likes Tuchel, likes him, but that is just such a, as I've said so many times, like a year now. <laughs> such an impossible. Bloody yeah. hell, best time are going to be so difficult just letting them go. And I mean, it, 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 all it's waiting for right now for that Rice move is just for a bid to be made. If we make that official, I feel like Declan can maybe take things on his own end and then we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, Wes, how about you giving us a, a, a valuation that's realistic, like to even work with? Yeah, so I would say, I'll just jump in there and say that um, Declan has a lot of respect and time and affiliation for the club. So it, for those who are thinking he's going to put in a transfer request or push the move, I wouldn't expect too much from that, to be yeah. honest. I think it's he's very much... You know, he has, obviously has a dream. He obviously loves Chelsea and he wants to play at the highest level. That's, everyone knows that, yeah. right? But he does, you know, he is excited by the West Ham project. He's obviously the captain there now, pretty much. They're in Europe next year. So, you know, whilst he would love a move and he would love love that to happen, he's also fully aware that, you know, he has a responsibility at West Ham. And he's not, yeah. he's not the kind of guy to, to, to push a transfer move or, you know, to force it. So, but again, he has a dream, right? It just needs Chelsea to put a bid in. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see if that dream comes true for, for Declan this summer. But um, of course, with the Euros taking place, like how much does that maybe slow down the progress when it comes to uh, getting these deals done? Like, is it more of a case of you know people are speaking to the uh, you know the agents right now to, to talk things exploratory, or or is it really just some um, you know holding up us getting these deals over the line? Yeah, no, it definitely slows things um, in the respect of anything can happen at any moment, right? Prices can you know these. The guys who are playing right Lukaku right now, if you're his agent, you're probably going, well, there's another 20, 30 million chucked on top of it because he's the top goal scorer at the Euros right now, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah you're yeah. playing with agents who are very, very smart. Their job is to get the most for their player, right, and the most for their club. So, yeah, no, that, it definitely slows and makes the process a bit harder. It can also go the other way, right, in terms of if they're struggling. You know, there's been jokes, right, that Guardiola and City put in that bid now because Harry Kane's not, ex not exactly exploding. So they're putting a bid now. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how much truth there is in that, but... You know, the Euros definitely slows things. It makes things a little bit more complicated because the player is away. You know, in terms of yeah. deal, deals can be done, but doing medicals, you know, getting the players confirmation that he wants to move there and, you know, bid in and stuff. That obviously makes things a little bit difficult. So, um, yeah, I would say it slows, but I'd also say it's typical Chelsea, right, Nina? You've been doing this for a while. You know how it is. Um, Chelsea are rush. Yeah. Chelsea are not desperate. Chelsea don't enjoy bidding wars. Chelsea don't enjoy a competition, <laughs> you know. They, yeah. They'll bid when they want to bid. And they're, they're, if they want the money and they want the player, they'll do it. But they're also very, you know, they're calm. They're very relaxed. They like to do things at the last minute kind of thing. So unless a deal comes up, which is, avoid, you know, you can't avoid it, which is like a habit, right? We had to get him. 
Yeah, yeah. So I know a lot of people are saying that about Erlen Haaland right now, but that you know, high versus transfer was very difficult in terms of all the financials. Haaland's on another level. So, you know, I know people are saying, oh, Villa are signing people, you know, Norris are signing people. But yeah, they're signing Wendy, who's a fantastic player, no disrespect, right? But yeah. that deal is so easy to do compared to Erlen Haaland or Declan Rice, you know? So we've got to take that into account. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, of course, with Chelsea Football Club, you're not going to be looking at players like that, even though they're, they're great players in their own right. You know, we're, we're trying to get the very best as it's been reported for for a very long time now. So, um, you know, of course, it's to end things and wrap things up. Realistically, based on the tidbits you're hearing behind the scenes, concrete things you're hearing behind the scenes, and, you know, just with how the window is starting to shape up, who are maybe the three, even four players that you realistically feel you could see playing for us for next season? Wow. Um, a bit of a hard one, I know. Yeah, no, I, 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 what I will say is Haaland is still being talked about. You know, I wouldn't, I've wouldn't. i I've always maintained don't rule out Lukaku 100% yet. Yeah. Too early to do that. Unlikely, but too early to rule that out. Obviously, the two yeah. DMs and, the, and Kamara I mentioned, keep your eye on those, all of them. You know, the, the Deccan Rice pursuit is not dead, but it's such a hard deal. Hard deal to do, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how, much, how serious how serious serious interest is in, in too too many right now. I know there's obviously interest, but I don't know how serious yeah. that yeah. is of yet. Yeah. Um, in terms of the centre backs are a really hard one to predict because it only seems to be Varane and Sule that I've really heard on. But Chelsea's mm -hmm. interest in Sule is pretty much dead at this point. And then Varane is mm -hmm. very much of the opinion of maybe looking at a PSG City or United. So mm -hmm. I think you're gonna see Nini, I think you're gonna see a couple more names pop up out of nowhere that maybe we haven't yeah. heard too much on, I haven't heard too much on. Um, but I will definitely keep my eye on the two centre forwards of Harlan and Lukaku and then the two holding mids, Rice, Tujimani. They're, the, they're the four names that are very prevalent right now. I know there's been links to Jack Grealish, but I really don't see that happening at all. Um, yeah. So I would say them yeah. four are the biggest names you want to look at. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be one or two more that will pop up late in the window, maybe because we can't get one of those three or four. And then Chelsea have got someone yeah. in their scouting network, which is extremely extensive, who will pop up at the end, you know? 100%, 100%, man. I think or as well, too, if you're a viewer, you know, a lot of the club's work, great work happens behind the scenes where sometimes, you know, we don't even get information. Like information gets locked down, nothing gets released, nothing comes out. So there's still major possibilities that we will just get a big news drop out of nowhere, as we saw last season with players like Hakim Ziyech and, and Timo Werner. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, right now, they're like the four main candidates. Let's hope that after securing the Champions League and all the money we've generated that, you know, I, f I, I like to hope that we are going to be a bit ambitious in the window. You know, sometimes you have to overpay. But for me, I think that one key position out of anyone is a striker because the stats show last season with how we're playing as a team and our chance creation that if we had that forward up front, we're getting a lot more points and games become a lot more easier for us. So, uh, yeah, Dan, man, thank you for coming on. Pleasure talking football. It's been a long time in the making getting this collab to happen. Uh, hopefully we can do a lot more of these two, man, during the summer as well. And, and of course, you guys, you can find all the information below in the description. And of course, in the scrolling text below, you'll find all their work for Dan and Simon Phillips, their website, some great reporting as well, man, I have to say too. And you guys, you know, do your bit, show us some love, show us some support. And so on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.